The legendary chin of Judober has finally gotten cracked, and the hammer was Matt Frivola. TK owing Judober in the first round. He didn't just finish him with strikes, he did it in the first round against one of the most durable guys in the UFC. And that's a wake up call for a lot of fighters who rely on their chin. It doesn't last. Judober's taken a lot of punches, crazy damage in his career, and it's finally caught up to him. Mafravol lands a godly of a right hook on his jaw and puts him down. And it was a very simplistic fight where it was pretty much left hand versus right hand. Judober was trying to line up the left hand. Mafravol was constantly throwing the right hand. It's the classic orthodox versus southpaw matchup. And they landed that punch a few times on each other. But the difference was Mafravol noticed a few things about Judober. Number one, early in the fight, which is still the first round, which is crazy. He was throwing body kicks. The reason why was because he noticed that Drew Dober constantly was putting his left hand up to defend himself. So the right hook from Mafravola was only going to get blocked or even fall short because Drew Dober was on it. Right? He understood the orthodox versus southpaw matchup, and that's where the body is going to be exposed. So Mafravola was throwing body kicks. And they were landing too. This, I believe, caused Judober's guard to drop. It lowered his hand more naturally throughout the fight. Because look at this. This is right in the beginning of the fight. Mefrovola throws a big right hand. And look where Judober's left hand is. Right up to block it. Now, it does still catch him at the top of the crown. But Dober's hand is up. And the fact that he got slightly caught by that would only encourage him to lift his guard up even more. Now, look at the knockout sequence. Dober throws a left hand to the body. He pulls it back. Gets back into his stance, and now where's his left hand? It's low. You actually saw this gradually happening throughout the fight. Look where Dober's hand is. This is the beginning of the fight. It stays up high, even when Favola starts throwing kicks. Dober's focus is all on keeping his hand up high. Body kicks start to land on him. As he's lifting that left guard up, after that body shot, look where his hand is now as Mavrovola throws the right hand. Again, lower not guarding his chin properly. This all came off of a few body kicks from Mavrovola to naturally drop that guard to where now he can land that right hook on him and put him down. Favola also noticed when Dober was throwing left hands to the body, he will always pull his head back with his hand low. This happened a couple times throughout the fight. Favola was noticing this, downloading the data, pinpointing where he needs to have his right hand. And throughout the fight, Favola's right hand started to land on Dober from distance. This came with Superman punches, and there was even a moment, not too far off from the finish, where they got into an exchange with each other. Dober throws a left hand, ducks under the counter shot, and tries to pull out of the exchange with his right hand extended. Where's Jude Dober's left hand? And Favola lands a right hook to the side of the head where Dober's left hand should be to guard himself. This is how the knockout happened. They get into the exchange with each other. Dober extends in, steps on the outside foot to draw attention to his right hand and pulling down Favola's left in order to open up the center more, but he goes with a left uppercut to the body instead of to the head. Favola actually connects with him with a check left hook, and this disrupts, this completely interrupts Jude Ober's attack. He pulls out of there, both hands low, chin in the air, and doesn't see that huge right hook coming, cracking him in the chin where his left hand should be guarding him. Beautiful work from Matt Favola becoming the first man in UFC history to knock out Drew Dober. And this even came after Dober was fainting to draw out right hand. So you notice him fainting toward Favola and low, pulling out as Favola's throwing that right hook. It's actual intelligent work from Drew Dober where he fainted to draw out that right hand a couple times throughout the fight. And it should show that Drew Dober understands the distance that he needs to be in order to avoid that right hook, which makes it all the more impressive of how Favola was even able to connect on him with it. Craziness, man. And this puts Matt Favola right into the top 15, got his first ranked win, and he called out Patty Pimblet. That could happen. Both guys are on win streaks, but we all know that Patty is not going to do well against Matt Favola at all. Patty would most likely get finished badly by Favola, and at some point, he needs to fight guys like this. At some point, I mean, he just beat Jared Gordon, who is not too far away from a top 15. Mafravola is right outside of it. He will be now ranked. But these are the kind of fighters now that Patty Pimblet would have to go up against. And the Favola matchup makes sense. I mean, there's a lot of people that always say, oh, Patty's not ready. Patty's not ready. He's had like four fights in the UFC already. All wins. He's going to fight someone like this now. And he just got past Jared Gordon. And that is honestly like a curse for him. Because these are the kind of monsters that he's going up against next. So amazing win for Mafravola. Knocking out Drew Dober. A huge accomplishment.